Welcome to the Explainer. Today, we are diving deep into the future of Proxmox. And let me tell you, 2026 is shaping up to be a huge make a break year for this open source virtualization challenger. We're gonna break down why. All right, here's how we're gonna tackle this. First, we gotta talk about the massive shakeup happening in the market right now. It's what's creating this whole opportunity. Then, we'll get into the nitty-gritty of Proxmox's 2026 timeline, look at the cool tech upgrades everyone's predicting, check out the crazy growth numbers, and then we'll ask the big one, is it really ready for the enterprise? Okay, first things first, let's set the stage here. The server virtualization world, which has been dominated by, you know, one big name for a long time, is in the middle of a massive, once-in-a-decade realignment. Seriously, things are getting shaken up. And what kicked all this off? Well, Broadcom bought VMware, and the whole landscape just exploded. Industry watchers like The Register are not holding back at all. They're calling this the biggest disruption they've seen in decades. So what's pouring gasoline on this fire? It all comes down to this number. Companies are seeing these absolutely shocking price hikes for their VMware licenses. We're talking anywhere from 150 to a jaw-dropping 500%. I mean, this isn't just a little price bump. It's the kind of thing that breaks budgets and forces IT departments everywhere to look for an escape hatch. And this, this shows you exactly what's happening. Gartner is predicting that by 2028, more than a third, a third of all VMware workloads will have jumped ship to other platforms. That is a huge shift, and you can bet Proxmox is right there, ready to catch a lot of those users. Okay, so with this massive market shakeup as the backdrop, what does the timeline look like for Proxmox itself? Now, they don't publish some super formal roadmap, but if you look at their history, their release schedule is actually pretty predictable, and it's all building toward one critical deadline in 2026. Now, this is where it gets really interesting, because it creates this major pressure point. Based on their usual five to six month cycle, we're gonna see versions 9.2 and 9.3 drop in 2026. But look at that date in the middle. August 31st. That's the end of life for Proxmox VE8X. That means anyone still running version 8 has a huge decision to make. Right smack in the middle of the year. So keeping that timeline in mind, what kind of cool new stuff can users actually expect to see in 2026? Well, the predictions are pointing to a really big step up. Proxmox is shifting from being just a tool you react with to becoming a platform that's proactive and, well, a lot smarter. And a huge part of that leap forward is going to be AI ops. That's AI for IT operations. We're talking about some seriously cool stuff, like using machine learning to spot performance problems before they crash your system, or having the platform intelligently place workloads to get the most out of your hardware. It could even do self-healing things, like automatically restarting a failed VM. The whole idea is to take a massive chunk of the manual work off of operations teams' plates. And it's not just about AI there's also a huge predicted push for real enterprise-level security. Think things like Zero Trust API tokens, unified authentication to make user management way easier, and even immutable backups to make you ransomware-proof. All of this is aimed at one thing, making Proxmox a platform that big businesses can actually trust, audit, and secure. And here's the kicker. This isn't just about managing one server at a time anymore. With the new data center manager finally out, Proxmox is making a serious play for that centralized multi-cluster management game. This is a direct shot at one of the core features that's kept so many big companies stuck with VMware. So you've got this tech evolution happening, but at the same time, the user growth is just staggering. I mean, the numbers really tell the story of the momentum Proxmox has right now. Just wrap your head around this for a second. By the end of 2025, we're looking at over 1.5 million Proxmox hosts deployed around the world. This is not some small hobbyist project anymore. This is a platform that's operating at a really significant scale. And all those deployments, they translate into real market mindshare. You know, according to surveys from places like PeerSpot, Proxmox has grabbed 16.1% of the server virtualization mindshare. Now, that might not sound like a huge number on its own, but consider this. Back in 2023, it was only around 10%. That's some serious acceleration. And of course, what's the number one reason for this incredible growth? You guessed it, cost. It's a simple, powerful argument. Organizations are reporting they're saving up to 90%, 9-0, on licensing when they ditch VMware for Proxmox. That's a number that gets any CFO's attention fast. Okay, but with all this growth, all these cool new features, it all leads to the million dollar question, right? Despite the momentum, despite the insane cost savings, 
is Proxmox really ready for the big leagues, for the demanding primetime enterprise world in 2026? And when you really look at it honestly, there's a clear trade-off. On the one hand, yeah, the cost savings are massive, and you get that freedom of open source, which is huge. But on the other hand, there are some very real gaps. For example, their enterprise support, it's basically limited to business hours in Central Europe. And key features that big companies rely on, like VMware's DRS for automatically balancing workloads, there's just no direct equivalent yet. Plus, there's a bit of a culture of inconsistent patching in the community. And for a big enterprise, that's a major security red flag. You know, this quote, which we pulled right from a user forum, just nails the current feeling perfectly. SMB or home data center, sure. Enterprise prod without a dedicated team, never. It says it all, right? For small businesses, for home labs, even for medium-sized shops with a really strong tech team, it's an amazing choice. But for a giant enterprise that needs that turnkey 24-7 support and expects every feature to be there, well, the jury is still out. And digging a bit deeper, that support question is really a financial one. Look, Proxmox is a lean, successful company, about 34 employees, 15 million in the bank. That's great. But the real question people are asking is this. Can a team that size really fund the R&D needed to close that feature gap with its massive competitors while also trying to support over a million and a half active installations? That's a tough balancing act. So as we look ahead to 2026, it all comes down to this. Is this the year Proxmox cements its place as the undisputed king of the small to mid-sized market, a super powerful, cost-effective choice? Or is this the year it finally closes those enterprise gaps, steps into the ring, and really challenges to lead this new virtualization landscape? The stage is absolutely set for one pivotal year.